So all our projects are still ongoing, I've been diligently working in a corner on my own things, but someone has now come along and decided he's going to live with me for over a month. Hello there. <laughs> you will recognise this, this is Matt. He is kind of slightly co-host to the channel now and will be for the next couple of videos because he has some things that he wants building. So we'll be doing that in between my bigger projects. So I'll more be, for you guys. I'll be trying to do as much as I can and not just rely on <laughs> we'll be, You'll be in training today. Yes. Right. So you'll probably know Matt if you followed his channel for a short while. We've done his custom Mandalorian armor not too long ago. Uh, so now we're actually going to upgrade that because you want to go for a slightly different armor style which is uh, gonna be cool. So it's gonna be the same thing that we did pretty much for his armor and my current Mandalorian build. So we're using the Fomex, but we're going down from five mil to three mil. So it makes it a little bit easier to work with. And we've got some really cool designs we wanna do. So let's go. Yes, and before you even say, what is it again? It's Fomex, remember, it's Fomex. You can get it from most online retail places like eBay and Amazon, but it's Fomex, okay? The stuff you use is Fomex, all right? Goodbye. He pays attention to the comment section. So this is what we're using. This, as we said, this is three mil Fomex, wobbly, but you can cut it with a blade, you can heat form it, you can paint it. It's basically like using EVA foam, but it's, it's more solid. And we're going for the thinner stuff because we're doing a lot of overlapping armor sections, so. Yeah, because we're gonna have arm pieces that are overlapping. So, um, yeah, because the last time we used the thick stuff and that was really hard to cut with a standing knife. So this time it's gonna be a lot easier. Do continue. Okay, so first up is we've got to make the, the paper templates. People always ask me where I get my templates from. For the most part, I make them by eye and uh, it's just on scrap bits of paper. This is something I always recommend people doing because you get used to working by eye. It really helps with problem solving later on in builds if that ever needs to be a thing to do. So, uh, do you have your original chest plate with you today? I do. Can I have it please? Yes. And this was my original with uh, right booby uh, at the moment removed. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna chuck it, I'm still gonna use it. So uh, any any kind of trip I think, I want my own design back, I can just literally swap shirts and there it is. So, because it's good for any quality. I, I looked, at, like most people have done now, I saw Mando's armor and I thought, oh yeah, that one piece, that one piece chest piece. One piece chest One piece chest piece looks very good. So um, I want kind of a fused kind of looky looky and the oh, whole, the whole. Oh, looky looky. Looky looky, I got hooky. And I forget if Boss has even mentioned because it's still early morning, not, um, that uh, I'm also going to do uh, new shoulder pieces and uh, just adjust the hilt on my sword. And I think that's about it chest, shoulders, and hilt. Gonna try and go for a dragony kind of scale look for my shoulder armor because I'm just keeping the theme with like a uh, dragon on the chest, so it should be fun. Let's let's see how it goes, shall we? Right, so I'm just getting the the, the, the right chest piece. Basically, you can find uh, templates for just standard Mando armor online. I think most of them are free. I think that's where you got yours. Yeah. Just did a little, just yeah. a little Google and you'll find them. But um, obviously. This is heat form, so it's not flat, but I'm just basically doing this just so I've got the right size. So obviously you, you gotta you gotta like scale stuff to fit you, which I think a lot of people forget to do. So that's kind of a rough size for what we want for the chest, and then we're gonna draw on a new pattern around it, and then cut it out, make sure it fits right, you're happy with it, and then you can transfer it onto the Fomex. You only ever need to do one, especially if you're doing well, if you're doing like different styles of armor then maybe change it up but for the most part you do one and you flip it over then you do the other side because most armor is symmetrical but mm -hmm. yeah yes right. yes oh god we also I, also I also forgot um i got a new lid so we're actually repainting doing that and ladies repainting lid. ladies lid oh my god i got a girl's helmet oh my god oh my god oh my god i just like the night owl design is that a problem is obviously, yeah. Is it obviously a problem? Welcome I just to Star Wars fandom. Just, think just, it's a problem. I just like the design. That's in the story. I have got a head cannon for you. Really want to know, but yeah, I just like the design. That's that's about it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a jab at people because Boba Boba Fett's helmet is a really cool helmet and a good design template. But most of the guys, um, Mando like cosplayers, I looked at it literally is Boba Fett's helmet but in a different colour scheme, and it just. Boring. Boring, yeah. To me, personally, it's just a bit boring. So, and as soon as I saw um, Clone Wars and uh, Rebels, 
and just that knight out of helmet. It's really cool. I just like the, it kind of just looks like a, a medieval knight kind of thing. And I have seen uh, cosplays where people have made it into a medieval, um, medieval design. Oh, person that we were just talking about is doing uh, that. Fox, yeah. yes. You can if you go check out her Instagram. She's doing actually doing a night owl, um, like a knight helmet design, which looks really cool. Yeah, so. big up to Vault Fox for being a very positive influence in the Star Wars community, uh, as well as Rex and Around, who both of them I've had the pleasure of chatting to on, on TikTok. Well, they seem nice. They're very, very nice. Oh look, I found a toxic the average toxic commenter on most Star Wars things, or maybe on your channel also. How you doing? Well, you can't wear that! You're a girl! You're a girl! You can't wear that! Star Troopers are girls! That's not a... <laughs> that, you're wearing a Sand Trooper! No, she knows it's the Storm Trooper weather. No, it's a Sand Trooper! <laughs> not a Sand Trooper! Not, not a Sand Trooper! <laughs> Star Wars can be what it wants to be, and people can be whoever they want the Star Wars. No, that's not correct! No, I refuse to believe that. Okay, just, that's dead now. Why do you sound like Mickey Mouse? Is Mickey Mouse the ultimate gatekeeper in the uh -huh. kingdom? You can't wear that! Ha ha! Ha! Oh god, gold, Mickey! Uh -huh. Who the hell do you think you are? Oh. Now you just get spit up through the chip and scope, go again. Skeletor! Yeah! Yeah, man! This is the helmet as well, by the way. Oh my god, this is the girl's helmet. Oh my god! So yeah, um, unfortunately this needs a lot of work. It's not my dear old dad's fault. Hey dad, if you watch this video at some point, I'm sure you will. Yeah, um, I think it's just the model itself is quite low res. So yeah, unfortunately this is going to need a lot of work and obviously gluing the lid to that. I think you well. should just have the lid on its own. I yeah. Think, I think, yeah. Just, just that. Just that. Just that. I think it'd be amazing. That is my Mando helmet we'll, now. We'll, we'll put a giant Mythosaur skull on there, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. This, this is, is the way. I could wear it for my face, so it could be like, <laughs> this is the way. It's like a really terrible version of our Mysterium. <laughs> So here we go, template for one half of the chest. I'm just going to draw it on now and I'm going to get you to cut it out. Yes, because I'm going to try and do things. I'm not trying to rely on the most talented person here. <laughs> uh, hello, if you're a prop company watching this, please hire me. Do. Um, yeah. Well, so when drawing stuff out on your sheets, to maximise the most space, like there's a straight edge here, I'm just using the straight edge of the foam, or the Foamex, and then just kind of figure out where you can put the second one, that oh, like here, so done. There, so literally the only waste bit of foam is going to be this section here, and then you've still got all this, which you can use later rather than just going out. Oh, put that there, put that there, because then you've got a load of waste. Mm -hmm. Maximize your your things. Give your the chunky yes. blade, chunky blade, and the safety ruler. Obviously, be careful on the corners. Make sure they go all the way through, because otherwise, when you pull up, we could snap a corner off. Mm. Yes, yeah, so go right up to your use use your blade in, use the edge of the ruler and just go right up to the right up to the edge. So you wanna be yeah, you right there. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, use use your ruler to help you. You might not get through it on the first cut, but yeah, try and stay as close to the ruler as you can. If it's a little bit off, that's fine. If you're cutting like into corners like that, sometimes it's best to cut away and into your excess stuff just so when you go in, because when you heat form it later, if you follow that line along there, so where you want to go in the corner, because then if you, yeah, if you cut away from okay, that, okay, yeah, that doesn't matter, then yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, obviously when you heat form it, the, any cuts you've got will, will be shown. Hey, there you go. Two chesty pieces. Mm -hmm. Next step is you go see which side, because sometimes when you're cutting, your blade will slip and you'll get a little bit of damage, so like you'll get a little cut mark. So you've got to be aware that when you're heat forming it, that will come out. So I tend to look around and see which side has got the least amount of damage on it. So these sides are the clean, cleanest side of the, 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 the thing. I know what I'm trying to say there. So this will be the side that's facing outwards. So we're gonna obviously glue it into position. But before we do that, uh, just gonna go and hand sand just these inner edges because otherwise it'll be hard to do when it's actually glued on. So I've given you a piece. I've got a piece, 
fold it up and just gently sand those edges just to get, to get some of those stuff off. Super glue. Ah, uh, yes, the Momo glue. Yes. So this is Momo glue off the Momo, our dearest Momo. He is a very funny man. He is a very funny man. We do love him dearly. This is a, just a piece of spare ABS from my commander build. Keep all the spare stuff for that as well because you never know when it's going to come in handy. Oh. So it's thinner than the Fomex so when we're just using it for joining pieces together you don't have like a really thick bit underneath. So you just want to do it so it's not uh... That was me singing the commando theme because you should watch that video and definitely play that game. It's very good. It's very good. Right. Very good build as well. Thank you. It took me five months of my life. Mm. Um, if I could get you to hold those pieces in place, if you're happy with that kind of gap between there. Gapage, yes. Dang! Look at these bad boys. Yes, these are heavy duty uh, scissors, good for cutting plastic, which was very useful for the commander build. Da -da! Da -da -da! Again, watch the so video. Good. Watch that video. So, what I'm going to do whilst Matt's cutting that is obviously going to flip it to the other side that's not going to be shown. And uh, using one of the blades, I'm just going to score the Fomex. So, you're not going all the way through, you're literally just making little indents. And so, what that does is it just helps the super glue stick. Uh, to the foam a lot better because you think this is a very slick surface and super glue sticks well to most things But obviously you want to help it where you can so I just kind of do a little cross hatching thing Don't have to be neat I'm gonna get you to do the same on that. So there's another blade. So what we do? So like, basically you're scoring it so obviously you don't do it on the bit that's showing so you just kind of want to make little lines and oh, then okay. we're going to do it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. Same we did for when we were building yeah, yeah, yeah. that first one. So it's just um, stick, yeah. sticks to the... Yeah, so the make sure you're inside the lines or they will be visible. Get your super glue. One more glue. Get the one more glue. Get a nice liberal amount, try not to go too close to the edge otherwise it tends to spill out. We'll just do one side at a time. And if you've got any kicker, then just spray the kicker on the other side. Line it up with what you've already drawn. And then just put pressure on it. Dun 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 Pushing down on this, pushing down on this until it's glued. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was on the fly as well. <laughs> Time for heat. Time for the heat. Now Formex really stinks when you heat it up, so it's best to do it in a well-ventilated area. So we're going to open all the windows and also have a mask that is good for vapors. So make sure it's got the correct filters on it because it can make you feel pretty dizzy. And certain plastics um, are not very good for your lungs when it comes to vapors.
Um, I just had this to start with because I thought, yeah, that'd be enough. But then, just glancing over at Mando over there, like, if I just wore this, if we're thinking Star Wars in the universe, my whole stomach there is just like exposed. So I thought oh, I would do a bit of belly armor. But now, unintentionally, which is brilliant, um, it's now made like a caco demon from uh, from Doom, which is my my second favorite love. Well, there's a there's a, a Doom in Easter egg on my uh, my sword, um, a Mando sword. So that's, this is at number two now. That's great. Look at that. So yeah, the 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 belly piece looks like a mouth. No, I'm not. The chest we're going to put so on side at the moment, um, and we're going to work on shoulder bells. So I'm going to keep this as the top bit of the armor, but basically do the same pattern as the chest piece, which is these kind of spiky little bits, and just have those basically on the shoulder pieces. So that is what we are doing now. So yep, making sure the paper fits in because it's harder to template something that's already curved. So just gonna just very carefully draw draw around it and kind of figure out what shapes you want. Cut it out, I'm guessing um, we're gonna paint them the same colour? Yeah. Or we have a different colour? Okay, red. red. So I won't attach these because obviously this is already painted, we'll just touch up the paint we've already got, because otherwise if we go for, end up for the different shade and you know, that's, it just saves us having to do that detail piece again. Hey, 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 get your chungus out of your mouth and pay attention to me, okay? What we've done here is, um, on the previous video, which you should definitely go check out, the Mandalorian build, um, I had a dragon on my old chest plate and I will continue to have a dragon of sorts, uh, which isn't necessarily Star Wars canon. Again, if you know your dragons, you know what that one is, it's gonna be exactly the same. Uh, but this one is going to be a full, kind of, not a broken up design. Um, so this is the rough template. I'm quite happy with that. It's an unintentional cobra, look at that. I'm not an artiste, but I'm quite happy with that. Ram a snake, Ekans. Maybe it's Ekans. Maybe I'll do an Ekans instead of a dragon. Do you think? No, I think I'm going to a dragon. But yeah, this is what we're going to work with. I um, think we're going to cut this out. And what's the idea? Going to make this out of clay? Uh, we're going to do uh, a little bit out of EVA foam and uh, probably end up sculpting the head maybe out of film clay, I don't know yet. Or we're just gonna wing it and see what happens. <coughs> ah, there you go. Welcome back. It's been a few days. Well, they don't know that. They don't know that. You've but... just given away all our secrets. Ha 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 ha. You think we filmed, all this, filmed this one? No. Someone accused me that of once, saying that you didn't build it because um, my head wasn't in shot and I had changed shirts in between sections of filming. And they're like, you started off the video in a black shirt and then someone in a red shirt is making it. I'm like, this took me more than one day to make. I'm not scummy. I changed my shirts. We have, we have all these bits of the armor now done out of the Fomex. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to add a couple of um, sort of nice weathering imperfections. So that's basically, you're just going to mark it out with a pencil and then you can either go at it with a blade, go at it with a Dremel, burn it with a heat gun, whatever you want to do. The joy of weathering, you can do whatever you want with it. 
And then once that's done, this is only going to be a little bit. Going to uh, prime all of this. Obviously, these things are going to be stuck together. But we're going to do those in different colours, so we're not glue them together yet, because it's just easier to paint them separately, then glue them, then try and tape off and paint different bits. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. Prime it, get that ready for paint, and then we can decide what colour goes where. And then we've got, we've still got the uh, the foam dragon, which is the top detail to work on. That's got a lot of extra detail to do. Uh, so we will sort that out a bit later. So let's figure out where you want your scarring. I need a pencil. Anyway, that is why they call me Prospector Mr. Hands. Good to know. Yeah. So, moving on. Obviously, these bits are the bits that have already been pre-painted and we're going back in and adding weathering sort of retrospectively, which ideally is not something you would do, but we're making use of what we got. So, uh, we've got this lovely bit of painter's touch. It's a, a silver. This one is actually a, a metallic a pewter. It's a, kind of like a dark silver. And uh, just gonna go back in with these smaller bits, just use the very end of one of these uh, barbecue cocktail skewers and just make sure we try and get it so you just don't see any of the white showing through underneath. And then we've got a paintbrush and just fill in the rest and just kind of try and match it up to what we're gonna do with the rest of the weathering. And um, maybe airbrush it a little bit as well, but for the most part, we're just gonna hand brush it. So let's go. Let's do it. I did some, I did some of this. You did, you did. I think you had the harder one actually. There's a lot more little details in that. I'm not gonna say any from. <laughs> uh, we've only just found out soon as well that um, I actually do have other pieces. So these little bits, we'll probably show them again uh, on the camera. But yeah, the, these these bits here need to be uh, weathered. So. Those are your thigh pieces. My thighs. With a few, um, a few easter eggs for anybody that can read what was that was that in um mandalorian yeah they're both in mandalorian so uh you can try for the people that are out there and the lights that shine on it if you know the top top one is a lot is a lot better it's a lot it's spelled out uh, i wonder better. who painted the top one yeah and then the bottom one's my i wonder who painted the bottom one as yeah. opposed to the top mm. yeah so <laughs> If you know your Mandalorian, then there's there's that. Translate but, it and tell us what it says in the comments. Yeah, or if you really know, just say in the comments, and we'll t I'll put it in the comments what, what both of them mean. Fully painted, fully painted, fully painted. Other bits. Silver bits. Silver bits. There are other bits to do, like. Uh, but these would be at some point, like I just just make those a bit tatty and pay them silver as we did with uh, these bits. Uh, uh, oh, oh, yeah, those oh, bits oh, uh, not, not, not those bits here. So our next challenge, because now we're doing, we're not doing kind of like reverse weathering like we're doing on that one where you paint your weathering on top. We're doing it the way I like to do it, which is kind of like the proper way. But my trusty little tub of liquid latex here. If you guys have seen me do weathering before, you know exactly what's going on. So all these grooves and scratches and dents, right, you just cover that with your liquid latex. You can cover any areas as well that you want, any paint chips, stuff like that. You wait for it to dry, then you spray paint over it, and when that spray paint's dry, you then peel off 
um, where the liquid latex is and it reveals the layer of paint underneath. Just a nice simple way of the weathering. I know people use like mustard and toothpaste as well, but I just don't want to be smearing like random stuff all over um all over the thing. So yeah, well, this is a bit of a cleaner method to do it with. Uh, we have now done the liquid latex and the gas, as you can see there's some bits still drying. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and paint the main colour on it. So these bits you see before me, these are all going to be black, apart from just some bits of the hand plate, it's going to be black. And uh, these other bits are going to be red. See, we've got some more detail that has to be done. But yes, yeah, so we're going to spray that, let that dry, and then they'll have the really satisfying bit of peeling the paint off, which I, I like. Na 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 Matt's corner, na 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 Matt's corner, doing stuff when boss isn't here. Na 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 na. I have been doing chunkers is at work, so when people ask, I see the comments. Where's the next video? Well, chunkers has also got to work. <laughs> she does have a job, so I'm here. Matt's corner, na 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 Matt's corner. Um, I thought I'd finish the rest of the um my old mando parts and just weather them up. So this is what we've done here. I've done the back plate and the knee plates here. Da -da 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 -da. And then we've always seen the shoulder bits. So that's all gravy. So that's all done. Great, awesome. Um, and I thought I'd show you just the gauntlet I've got here. This is a Death Watch gauntlet. And I think um, some guys of uh, the IO, oh, which is the, the mandos in the IO, um, and our little division, Crimson Watch, plug there. Um, they have used uh, I know piano string and a bike spoke to put a hinge on some of the gauntlets, so that might go that route as well. So uh, yeah, and yeah, weathering is so much fun. I get why Boss really, really enjoys it because it's all, whatever you do, it is all literally happy mistakes. Um, yeah, you make a mistake, but hey, you can just, it's just part of the weathering, you know? It looks natural, so yeah. So yeah, and as Chungus doesn't we usually do um, self-promotion, I should do it for her because people that can should support her on Patreon. I know some tiers um, get an art print that Boss does every couple months or so. She did an awesome Mysterio one back when Mysterio was done. So um, people, if they can, definitely look at her Patreon and support if possible. And please just like and share this video on YouTube because YouTube's algorithm is just working against Chungus. It's just ridiculous that the stuff they've got implemented implemented in now um, just either gets buried in the algorithm or people that subscribe don't see the videos. I mean, Boss has got, what, 102 on the sub count? So the, every video should be getting round about those numbers, but it's just not, So and it's a mixture of things. YouTube's just putting her at a disadvantage. So uh, just yet, yeah, like, share this video and look at her other awesome videos, please. That'd be fantastic. It is time for the peeling of the latex. You can see the sort of the lumps underneath the paint where the latex has been put on. So latex does not, sorry, paint does not stick to latex. All you gotta do is start scratching it off and the latex will peel like that. There you go, there's a little paint chip. So let's start peeling and dancing at the same time.
Right, so we've got our armour now, so the next stage for the weathering is because it's so bright and clean, we're just doing a, a sort of a, a... We're gonna make that boy filthy! We're doing a, 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 a wash, is, is the word I was looking for, so it's a weathering plus, basically, a little bit of a black acrylic, just a bit there, uh, that you make sure that it's nice and watered down, or you could go a little bit thicker, depending on what you want. And you get a bit of your armour, slap it on there like you mean it. We're just going to get the main shape of it like you don't your money. And just kind of start wiping it off, make it look dirty. So the idea is it gets sort of in the grooves. It and makes it look more realistic. Basically, it just adds another little something. A couple of sort of the divots there, just darkens it up. Just makes it look a little bit more real, a little bit more pretty. So this is the basic of the foam dragon, as you can see I've glued on another layer and we've just roughly gone over it with the Dremel to get a rounded shape because the whole body is going to be covered with um, little individual foam scales so it doesn't have to be super clean, you just want um, the correct shape uh, for your dragon body and I'm also just going to be doing some extra detailing on the head but not just using foam strips, I'm going to be using a bit of um, craft foam clay. Um, just to get some of the details out that would just be easier to sculpt rather than try to cut and sand and stick on. Hopefully it will look better. And that is why they call me Buckaroo Bonsai. <laughs> Finish the dragon. So I don't know how many scales are on there, but that was a couple of nights worth of work. That's a lot of scales. It's worth it though. So next stage is make sure all these little tiny glue threads are off. The spiders. The spiders are the gone. We keep catching them. We do get big mofos that keep coming in at the moment. They're mahoosive. They're like this. No, they're literally not like that. But they're, they're, still, they're still pretty chunky boys. Chunky boys. I don't mind if they're going to give me superpowers, but then they're not. They're just going to be creepos. No, no, no. No, no mm -mm. superpower for you. Mm -mm. Didn't say the magic word. You the next step is plaster dip because you got to seal the foam before you paint it. All the paint kind of soaks into the foam and it's just a pain in the butt. And also just make sure everything looks nice and it gives a nice sort of protective coating to the foam, especially with uh, the foam clay head because the foam clay is a little bit weaker. So we're gonna protect that. The head looks a little bit smaller now, but it's still cool. Then after that, it's literally just a case of, we've got we've got your chest piece. Well, once we finish that, we're gonna glue that to the chest piece, but then we've gotta sew on some new Velcro to a new undershirt. 
because obviously that's in different places to what your old armour was. And then yeah, this part of the video will be done because part two will be focusing on the 3D printed pieces which need a lot of work. A lot of work. Yes, a lot of work. So That's the um, sound of a lot of work. That is the sound of a lot of work. When you look at something you go, oh, hmm. That's more, that's more of an intro Low poly one. models are very, very annoying. Yes, they are. Anyway, and then, yeah, we have a special assistant here to help along with the process. As you can see, he just supervises. Yeah, yeah make sure everything, you know, we work within the boundaries and mm -hmm. on the time schedule, because he's money. Oh, he gets fuming when we go over, over budget. Yeah. Oh, we don't, no, please don't look on camera. Cause Here's our dragon with a bit of plastic on it now, it looks really good. Uh, just marks out where we want to add some scratches, so just going to go over that with the Dremel. And then, um, yeah, going to go start painting it. So we're going to have this in uh, red, same red we've been doing for most of the armour. Wait for that to dry, do a little black wash so we get in sort of all the scales, just using some black acrylic. Then do a little bit of uh, silver in all these little grooves. Seal it with a clear lacquer or a matte lacquer, depending what Matt wants to do. Glue it onto our chest armour and then we're pretty much done. Weathering, natural weathering. So Harrison is helping us to put holes in the cape by playing, can you grab the cape through the back of the chair? Ah, oh, it's got the one claw on it. The one, just the one. You have been a good, bless you. You've been a good boy helping with the weathering, you're gonna put holes in it. For anyone wondering what we're doing, this is kind of my usual method to mark stuff out, just not using the hot glue gun because Matt doesn't want to get burned. Ow! <laughs> so like you... last time. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, it is a hot glue gun. Yeah. So basically, well, what should really be happening is you just tack on the Velcro where it's meant to stay with glue. So like, if I very gently pull it off, the other Velcro will be left behind in the place where I want it to sit. But it's not really working with the super glue. But that's okay because it is leaving behind glue marks, so I know where to put it anyway. So not a biggie. That means Matt don't get burned. We still know where to put it, and we can tack it on and run this through a sewing machine, which will be a lot quicker than hand sewing it. So just leaning up against him so the glue sticks. That's all. Very casual. Hey, welcome to the casual workshop hour. And that is why they call me the Milky Bar Kid Junior. Milky Bar Kid Junior? Mm -hmm. Oh, the Milky Bar Kid your dad. The Milky Bar Dad. The Milky Bar Dad. The Milky Dad. Scales across each section 
the black wash really makes it pop and then the the uh, what is it lacquer layer mm -hmm. makes the red come out but yeah just just look I mean look at it and there's a tiny bit of little hot goose strand there I can't do it with gloves it's too difficult I don't I get it yeah. there we go yeah. but yeah um just compared to it, I, I still love the old one but if you compare that <laughs> The simplicity yeah, of, yeah. of your old that. chess piece we did. And I still love it. It's great. But you had that to that. I mean, yeah, let's do it side by side. Yeah. I mean, that's good. But it's Dalu good. Dalu good. Dalu good, Joe. Good. But Dalu good, Joe. So um, this one will be will be uh, with me for, well, I don't, there's no need to redo anything now, no. really. I mean, we are um, missing a couple of bits yes, at the moment. Ignore, no. ignore arms and shoes, shoes and, and face. And face, because uh, I've got a girl's helmet, oh my God. I've got a girl's <gasps> helmet. <gasps> there's the girl's helmet in there. The girl's <gasps> helmet's in there. Oh my God. Got a girl's helmet. Oh my god, I don't care. It's cool. Night owls are cool. I just like the helmet design. What? That's. Yeah. It's a... I didn't know. I I was I was ignorant. I didn't know it was for girls until I watched Clone Wars. So, but it's still damn cool. But it's a damn cool helmet. Yeah, the whole design of the cheeks. We're gonna put a dragon kind of teeth design on the on the helmet. So it's that's gonna look sicker. So and. Sick son. Um, I only thought recently, unfortunately, my, my dear old dog um, died a few weeks ago, so I'm going to have a little tribute design for him on there as well. Because I love my boy, bless him. So I'm going to have. You know he'll be fighting by your side. Yeah, so I'm going to have like an in, in universe design to kind of honour honor him. Yeah, so. So a lot of work, so you'll yes. see that in a separate video because we got to deal with all that 3D printing. And some of it's low poly, which takes a long time to deal with. So that'll be the next episode. But here you go. This is. It's not my fault. That's okay. No, it's not your fault. It's it's the file. It's the file. It's a low poly file. When you can pay for three D files because free ones, this very very hit and miss, as we found out with the lovely stack over there. So when you can pay for them, because people have a lot put a lot of hard work into those ones. So. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes go pay, don't go free, because you're guaranteed quality if you pay. Well, depending on the person. Swings and roundabouts, look at the reviews, things like that, you know. Yeah. Take 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 some initiative when it comes to props. There are some chances out there, but hey, I do honestly I think that chess piece is one of the favourite bits of armour oh, I've actually made. Um, I mean, <laughs> it we, just feels really good just yeah. to ooh, well, I have the gloves on I can't rub really, it. But, but yeah, when it was a daunting task, it seems, but it only really took us... Three evenings yes. I spent sitting there gluing on. Oh. I don't want to count how many scales, because I have no idea. Just a couple of hundred, probably, on there. Yeah, I'd say at least, yeah. 150, I'd say? I'd probably say more than 150. That, okay. That's a lot of... That's a yeah. lot. That's a lot, Joel. That, that, that is a lot. But, yeah, I'm uh, super happy with this. I think I'm too. I'm still really in my head too much for Boba at the moment because I look in the mirror and I think this looks really empty. But Mando doesn't have that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So. Because Mando is covered with his cape, yeah. so you don't notice it as much. No. But we can but always tweak things later on. We can always tweak things later. But I think I'll get used to it. And, I'll, and once the helmet's on, it's also you'll you'll like the added maneuverability of having yeah. your shoulders Cause free. Because at, at the moment I've got quite a bit. So I'll get used to it. It just I've seen so many Boba Fett designs. I mean, my 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 old one there was based on Boba Fett. So yeah, I, I, this this is good. It's this, nice. This I like. Look good. It look nice. And that's still cool to do. I'm doing it to Obi Wan. <laughs> Magnetic sword. So yeah, might redo this at some point as well to actually yes. have wires across. I mean, I did say the boss would try and just. Um, just sort this one out, update it. We can't retrofit it with lights. It's a bit too technical. So. Not technical, it's just there's no room in a handle to put a power cable and yeah. we'd have to cut lots of bits apart to, to add lights in. So it'll be easier literally just to make a sword from Start scratch. From and it scratch would, again. It would just look a lot neater as well. Yeah. So, you but know. that's down the line, I think. Because I still love... This. You could hit people with that and not worry about anything breaking because ah, it's just, oh, duh, oh no, uh-huh. So, yeah. Yes, and that is still so cool to still, do every yeah. single time. 
go watch the first no. build video if you want to see how it's done. You can kind of see it there, magnets. But yeah, that's the end of part one of this build. So I hope you enjoyed our redoing of Matt's Mandalorian armor to making it a little bit more samurai, which is kind of what you wanted to go for. And I, did. I, think it's I played a lot of Ghost of Tsushima. This was the whole Tsushima. idea. That's why the plates look like this, and that's why the shoulder pieces look like this. And well, we've added lots of overlaps, and it's cool. So come back for part two, where we tackle the 3D printed stuff of your gauntlets and your brand new bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun with that. Thanks, mate. <laughs> right, so subscribe if you like what you see and you want to see more stuff like this. Support me on Patreon if you want. Special thanks to Jeff Kenny, who does and has his name shouted out in my videos, because that's on a certain tier. Links are always at the end of my videos and in the description down below. Also, hire me if you're part of a props company here in the UK, in like kind of South England area, and I'd absolutely love that. I, that's, I think that's cool. I nearly poked you in the boob then, I do apologise. Ugh! <laughs> Harassment! Harassment indeed! So, we will see you guys in the next episode! Of whatever, because Matt's in a few kind of builds at the moment, so whatever comes out next. <laughs> Goodbye. May the force be with you. Goodbye. Goodbye.